Amid the tense U.S.-China relationship, ongoing pandemic, and a continued slowdown in China's economy, American businesses are becoming more pessimistic about their investments and operations in China. A report released on September 19th indicates that optimism about future projects among American enterprises in China has fallen to a new low. More U.S. companies are actively seeking to reduce their dependence on the Chinese market. By diversifying their revenue streams and mitigating risks, the 2023 China Business Report, released by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, AmCham Shanghai, at Price Waterhouse Cooper Center, is one of the longest-running surveys on American businesses in China. The report found that only 40 percent of respondents expect their revenues in China to grow faster than their global revenues in the next three to five years, a seven percentage drop from 2022. Furthermore, 40 percent are adjusting or planning to adjust their investments in China, an increase of about six percentage points from last year. The majority are looking towards Southeast Asia. Investments in China were reduced by 22 percent of respondents this year, up three percentage points from last year. Meanwhile, 19 percent are considering relocating some existing businesses out of China in the next one to three years, a two percentage point increase from last year. The primary reason is the uncertainty in U.S.-China trade relations, followed by expectations for a slowdown in China's economic growth. Only 17 percent rank China as their top global investment destination, down from 27 percent in 2021. More foreign companies are subtly shifting away from China toward potentially more lucrative markets in India and Southeast Asia. Apple CEO Tim Cook visited China in March, meeting with Chinese Premier Li Qiang. However, since 2018, Apple's supplier numbers in India and Vietnam have doubled, continuing the trend of supply chain diversification. Tesla's founder Elon Musk visited China in May and was granted special treatment, meeting three ministers within 44 hours. A month later, reports surfaced that Tesla was in talks with the Indian government to set up a factory, even though its Shanghai plant remains its largest production center. According to the 2022 report, only 55 percent of companies were optimistic or slightly optimistic about their five-year business prospects, a 23 percentage point drop from 2021. This year, the ratio has further decreased to 52 percent, the lowest in the survey's history. Pessimism has become the predominant sentiment for foreign companies operating in China this year. Moreover, an AmCham survey published on March 1. Reveal that only 45 percent of surveyed U.S. businesses consider China as a primary or top three investment destination, marking the largest drop in the survey's 25-year history. The Central News Agency reported that high-profile visits to China by foreign executives like Musk in the first half of this year has led Chinese state media to promote a positive outlook on China's economy. Nevertheless, this hasn't slowed the diversification efforts of foreign companies. The relationship between foreign capital and China is evolving from mere profit-seeking to a more risk-averse approach. Chinese economist He Jiangbing told Voice of America's Chinese website that the survey results reflect geopolitical factors such as the Ukraine conflict and tensions over Taiwan. He stated that China's tightening control over foreign investment and private enterprises is not conducive to attracting investment. As a result, the pace of economic decoupling between China and the U.S. may accelerate in the future. Quote, Overall, the business environment will deteriorate and will not improve, he said. Personally, I predict this trend will not reverse in the next five to ten years. From the perspective of American businesses, one of the primary reasons many lack confidence in operating in China is the continually deteriorating U.S.-China relationship. According to comments by Michael Green and Scott Kennedy, senior advisors at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the U.S.-China relationship has deteriorated since the late 1960s. While China has ceased promoting revolutionary warfare, from Washington's perspective, a view increasingly shared by Europe and other Asian countries, Beijing's push for state capitalism, disregard for human rights, nationalist claims, and support for Putin pose severe challenges to the existing world order. The comments also point out that after global financial crises, natural disasters, COVID-19, and extensive supply chain challenges, business leaders have become adept at preparing for black swan events and ensuring business continuity. They've adopted a just-in-case rather than a just-in-time mentality, learning to prioritize layoffs and protect key technologies. The current dynamics of U.S.-China relations suggest that preparation might be needed for potential black swans. Ranging from technological competition to significant military incidents.
Since the U.S.-China trade war began in 2018, a series of tariff policies have made it harder for U.S. businesses to operate in China. For example, a report by the Council on Foreign Relations highlighted that in March 2013, the Trump administration announced tariffs on at least $50 billion worth of Chinese imports in response to allegations that China stole U.S. technology and intellectual property. Shortly afterward, the Trump administration introduced new tariffs totaling $34 billion on Chinese products, with over 800 types of industrial and transportation products, as well as televisions and medical devices, facing a 25% import tax. China retaliated with tariffs on over 500 U.S. products worth approximately $34 billion, targeting goods such as beef, dairy, seafood, and soybeans. Both American and Chinese businesses suffered losses during the trade war. From the perspective of U.S. businesses, retaliatory tariffs and restrictions from the Chinese government were unavoidable, being caught in the crossfire. However, it's essential to note that taking actions against the CCP for stealing American technology and intellectual property is entirely justified. The real issue is that businesses can't stop the CCP's long-standing practices of theft and deceit. In the aftermath of the U.S.-China trade war, Huawei's executive, Meng Wanzhou, was arrested on allegations of violating trade sanctions against Iran and engaging in fraudulent activities. In what appeared to be a retaliatory move, the Chinese government promptly detained two Canadian citizens, accusing them of endangering China's national security. The CCP's primary response to sanctions arising from its own transgressions often revolves around retaliation, casting doubt on most companies' ability to navigate the tense U.S.-China relationship and operate smoothly. According to a BBC report, the Biden administration is taking increasing measures to prevent China from pilfering American technology. In his State of the Union address in February, President Biden stated, I've made it clear to President Xi that we seek competition, not conflict. He continued, I won't apologize for investing in making America stronger, investing in innovation and industries of the future, areas China aims to dominate. However, this stance hasn't been well received in Beijing. Xi Jinping recently commented that the U.S., alongside other Western countries, is, quote, encircling and suppressing China, posing unprecedented challenges to its development. The CCP strategy seems unaltered, using stolen advanced technologies as a foundation for rapid development, leveraging economic growth from U.S. companies while simultaneously suppressing them, and enforcing all enterprises operating in China to strictly comply with the CCP's directives. With businesses now facing heightened regulations and security risks, the challenges are mounting. While CCP officials publicly encourage foreign executives to boost investments, Beijing is concurrently ramping up policies emphasizing security and self-reliance, potentially complicating foreign companies' operations in China. Reuters highlights that foreign business and diplomatic circles in China have grown increasingly wary since Beijing expanded its counter-espionage laws earlier this year. In May, the CCP sentenced an American citizen to life imprisonment on espionage charges. He was arrested while dining with a senior Chinese newspaper editor and a Japanese diplomat. The editor's family said the allegations were fabricated. The arbitrary detention of foreign citizens by the CCP isn't an isolated incident. China's state security department has called for a nationwide mobilization, urging the public to be vigilant against what it perceives as foreign-backed subversive activities. With the recent enactment of stringent data security and counter-espionage laws in China, European and American companies are now dissuading senior executives from taking information out of the country, even including daily operational details. In response, the CCP has launched retaliatory measures. According to the New York Times, multinational corporations have for years been distributing disposable laptops and smartphones to executives visiting China, aiming to guard against potential theft of sensitive company data. This summer, some companies also started prohibiting Chinese executives from taking laptops and smartphones out of China. Eric Zheng, the president of the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, pointed out that these company-imposed restrictions on carrying laptops out of China to other parts of Asia have made managing regional businesses in Shanghai increasingly challenging. Soren Meyer, who coordinates tech policy for the European Union Chamber of Commerce, highlighted another issue. When top executives are outside China, the country's data security laws now prohibit them from accessing certain data on company computers within China. These new data protection regulations compel U.S. and European multinational corporations in sectors like finance and infrastructure to invest in independent systems within China, separated from their systems elsewhere. In recent times, China has introduced a swath of extensive regulations compelling businesses to alter operational strategies in the country. 
Sean Stein, U.S. Counsel General to Shanghai, said, quote, "We see more regulations appearing across various sectors, but candidly, their implementation or definitions are often very vague, leaving companies unsure about the red lines." While an increasing number of companies decide to revamp their strategies in China, it doesn't necessarily suggest a total severance of ties between foreign companies and China. Accounting for 18% of global GDP, China matches the entire European Union's contribution and is only surpassed by the U.S. at 24%. China's transition to a more sustainable climate will require trillions in investment, signifying enormous business opportunities. China also stands as one of the world's largest producers of renewable energy products, such as solar panels and electric vehicle battery components. However, China also presents unique risks for multinational companies. Intensified tensions between the CCP, the U.S., and Europe could potentially disrupt global value chains, especially in critical sectors. According to a report from the McKinsey Global Institute, many firms are increasingly underperforming. The most rapidly growing multinational corporations from 2010 to 2021 saw their revenues grow by 20 percent annually, as opposed to 16 percent for the last nine years. Furthermore, underperforming multinational companies are witnessing diminishing prospects with faster revenue losses post-pandemic than before, 5 percent versus 3 percent. Moreover, competition between local Chinese businesses and multinational corporations over market shares in numerous sectors has intensified. For instance, from 2006 to 2020, the market share of multinationals in China's overall revenue fell from 16 percent to 10 percent. Local companies selling portable electronics, groceries, and 5G infrastructure gained 20 percent to 40 percent of the market share in the past decade. From 2017 to 2021, the research and development expenditure growth rate of China's largest listed companies was three times that of non-Chinese Fortune 500 firms. Simultaneously, as competition becomes more brutal, the pressures of an aging population add operational challenges. As reported by the World Health Organization, China is among the nations with the fastest aging populations. With rising life expectancy and decreasing mortality rates, it's estimated that by 2040, 28% of China's population will be over 60. This trend will exert a downward pressure on China's labor supply, diminishing market share for foreign investments, fierce competition between domestic and foreign firms, and an aging population make the risks of operating in China increasingly daunting, forcing U.S. companies to confront the reality of seeking alternative avenues for growth. As a growing number of major foreign corporations shift their operational focus, where does this leave the multitude of foreign companies operating in China? The UK government website gov.uk, in its Overseas Business Risk China report, notes: While the authorities have taken measures to bolster the strength of the Chinese courts, the judicial system is not independent of the CCP. There have been instances where officials have utilized state media channels, including forced confession broadcasts, to hijack judicial proceedings. The court might be influenced by ongoing political campaigns. The report also mentions many UK companies have received lucrative business offers or other unsolicited messages from China, which later turned out to be scams. Lastly, the report points out a quote widespread threat of terrorism in China, long seen as a huge economic prize, is riddled with risks that resemble a hunter's trap. Many corporations have fallen prey to its allure. While many more have come to sobering realizations after enduring bitter regrets and hard lessons.